I am Siddharth Pranayak Patankar and with me today is a very special guest all the way from the UK. I am being joined by Julian Thompson who is Design Director at Jaguar and there he is all set. Uh, Julian, it's wonderful to see you. Good evening and good morning to where you are right now. Wonderful yeah, to have hello. you. Hello, great, great to be here. Great to, uh, great to join you. Thank you. No, it's my pleasure and you know, I think uh, I've been wanting to do this for a while and have you on the show so uh, it's really great that you gave us the time today. Um, and, and, you know, we're very happy to see you. Good, good. All right, so uh, I'm going to jump straight into it, as it were. Uh, you know, the, uh, okay. the, the current situation, uh, we've talked about it sort of ad nauseum now, and I know everybody has an opinion on, you know, where things are going or how things are going to open up. But that notwithstanding, I think let's just talk about what it's been like for you. I mean, personally and both professionally and personally, uh, you know, what has this period been like? What has it taught you? What has it, uh, you know, maybe um, allowed you to discover? Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a lot. Of, it's a big question there. <laughs> I, I guess going back about a few months, um, I took over from my previous uh, design director, Ian Callum. Yes. Last July, it's coming up to nearly a year now. Um, we moved into a new studio, which you saw, um, and we uh, were starting to build up a real burst of energy looking at Jaguar. I think um, following Ian's departure, it wasn't necessary that we wanted to do everything differently, but it was a chance for us really to have a fresh look at the Jaguar brand and its design language. And we had a fantastic new facility. We believe it's one of the best studios in the UK, or yes. in the world, in fact. And so a lot of excitement, a lot of pent up energy, and really, you know, if I go back to sort of uh, January, February, a lot of excitement, um, a lot of enthusiasm, you know, the place was really starting to come alive. And suddenly this uh, terrible pandemic yeah. hits us and we have to leave an area which should really become our second home, an area we are really fond of. And, you know, you get very attached to your design proposals, your design models and the team working with them. You know, suddenly that all had to disappear. And we had to retreat back to our homes and carry on. And uh, we've been managing to carry on fairly well, really, um, at home. Uh, Technology-wise, you know, we, we've been meeting up regularly, seeing people. Um, all the design software we use, be it 2D or 3D, we can still continue to, to, to review. Um, we still uh, review CAD data online, 3D data. We review clay models from our studio in China online. So we can do, we can do most things, you know. We, 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 I'm, I'm surprised myself. I'm not I'm not a guy who likes to spend all day at his computer, but I surprise myself how, how effective we can, can be. But having said all of that, you know, good design is about collaboration, it's about closeness, it's about those friendships and those working relationships you have with people. And you can still do those on Skype or whatever like that, but it's not really the same. And so, you know, I do miss the studio and I'm, I'm aching to get back to it. In terms of what we've learnt, you know, I think uh, we've been forced to step back from our everyday work. You know, we, you know, whichever way you look at it, you've been forced to just stop, take stock, you know, and that can be a, quite a refreshing thing as well. When you're doing a vehicle like a, a Jaguar, you wanted to make it look like a something that's very spontaneous and very artistic, something that's been, you know, created by a genius in a, in a few pen strokes. You know, that's what you want—that burst of energy. You want that real, that human touch, a bit of humanity, that love and craftsmanship that goes into its creation. You want to make it look like it's done by one person in a morning. You know, <laughs> and yeah. so the key to it, you know, we have three hundred people in design. And they all work very hard over probably a three-year period to, to release a car design. Mm -hmm. But you want to make it look like it's done by one person in a couple of hours. You want that, you know, that emotional connection with that product. Even some of the concept cars that you did, th that's when we, I guess, you know, the CX-75, for example. Uh, it, it's yeah. one car where you really sort of saw that come to life the first time. 
Um, talk us through that. I mean, some of the specific cars that maybe you worked on as well over this last you know decade or so, where we've seen really stellar, good-looking, very popular products coming from Jaguar. Yeah, I mean, um, I joined Jaguar only um, six months after Ian Callum in nine. I know you both worked really closely. Yeah. Yeah, and I've I, I've always run uh, advanced design, so I've always yeah. run the the first part of the project. So every single Jaguar we've done, be it a concept car or production car, had started with my team then, and it's grown. And over the years, I've sort of grown my level of responsibility up to, to taking over. So it's been a very organic process. Um, and you know, we've gone through different phases. You know, when we started in two thousand. You know, the brand was in a very sort of retro phase, yeah. you know, and we and our job there was to really drag it into the present day, mm -hmm. very sort of contemporary products. And we did a lot of very con controversial things, which which weren't liked by the, the uh, management at the time. So vehicles, our concept cars like the the R Coupe and the RD6, yeah. you know, they weren't they weren't liked at all by our management then, you know, because they were so set in their ways. So it's very much a company which had a a very respected and very well understood set of design values, but they were just stopped. And so we had to really bring them bring them forward. Over the years we've introduced various cars, the first XK, the next XF, the XJ, and we've transitioned to a more modern contemporary brand while still trying to keep hold of, you know, all the special features of a, of a Jaguar. And then the concept cars, you know, the concept cars are always something for us to really um, have a bit of fun with, um, you know, really extend, you almost, almost like turn the dial up to 11 to do something very, very special. Uh, they have a more realistic function as well in that they do push both um, the design teams, but also the management within the company, but also the public to really stretch their thought about what our brand could become. And the CX-75 you mentioned, that was done as a, a, an anniversary car for 75 yeah. years of Jaguar. And we wanted to create something which is really um, a car which really, really was about the best a Jaguar could possibly be. The I Pace, in many ways, of course, a triple winner for us at the World Car Awards as well, which we were very thrilled about. Um, and. Um, it also won for design. I mean, you know, a lot of people saw it as yeah. this progressive, modern, electric vehicle. But at the same time, yeah. you know, the fact that it's uh, almost not just clutter breaking, but mold breaking design in many ways uh, is also yeah. something that was recognized by the international jury. Um, what was that moment like for you and uh, as a team? Because, uh, you know, it was obviously a big historic thing that happened. And, um, you know, the fact that it was the I-Pace, what does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, that was a, that was a, a, it's a, it's a, a car which almost slipped under the radar, you know, for us in terms of development terms. You know, it was, it was a project which sort of grew in the background, and you know, it was always a little bit of an outlier. And sometimes you need those vehicles. You need those vehicles which are, you know, take a few risks. You know, try to move the game on. You know, that it's very difficult to do this modern world when there's so much at stake in terms of financial investment of these vehicles. To actually take that sort of risk is difficult. It's difficult to actually, you know, change something so radically. But, you know, that's very much what we did to that car. And it was so exciting to be able to do something like that, to really pull the covers off something which was totally unexpected. If you think at the same time, you know, uh, we knew that Mercedes was doing their electric car and Audi was doing the, the uh, first e-tron, you know, both those cars were very, very conservative in terms of what they did. They both used very, very conventional layouts with long bonnets and they were just adaptations of cars, you know. And here was Jaguar coming along before those guys getting their car onto the market first with a much, much more ambitious solution. You know, so that felt really, really good, you know, to see that we'd really gone out there and we delivered what we said we would, you know. So that was a fantastic feeling and, and the car still looks really fresh now. Yeah, oh yeah. So, we're, yeah, we're very, very pleased with that car and how it's actually rewritten. And, you know, Jaguars have always been honest to their engineering. They haven't tried, tried to hide what's underneath them. So that's uh, the fact we use the new powertrain, uh, all the different uh, packaging uh 
restraints would so some of them were gone other ones were introduced but we had a fresh eye and everything like that every designer wants to do that you know a designer doesn't want to hear okay we're going to do a new version of this and can you do it a bit like before but put the bigger boot on it the designer doesn't want to hear that yeah. how does that set you up now for future electric and maybe you know electrified vehicles whether it's a hybrid or anything else or maybe even one with an ice engine but how does that set you up in terms of the understanding uh, the, the experience, the capability that you now have? Yeah, I, I think um, we're a great believer in electric cars, as you know. We're, we're going to be electrifying um, in some form or other all our future vehicles uh, from now on. We'll have some degree of electrification. Um, I guess, you know, the transition to electric cars and, and how quickly it happens is very, very difficult for the industry to really to cope with. You know, because it's it's different depending on um, uh, people's tastes. It's different depending on uh, people's confidence, and probably the most challenging thing is really um, legislation restrictions yeah. globally. Different attitudes. You know, you've seen the price of oil falling away in the last few months, and you know the resurgence of you know um, conventional cars in the states. Uh, because of the political situation as well there and you know so things we thought were going to happen quicker than they are happening in some areas have been delayed and then you know um some areas are adopting electric cars quicker than, than we thought that they might but it's really difficult because you can't you can't just make cars which do everything you have to like make a bet on what's happening in the market um unusually for uh well fortunately for us in in the uk in April, when the car market pretty much dried up, the second best car selling car in the UK was actually the Jaguar I Pace. Because in this COVID time, where everyone's stressing out about um, you know, health and well being, you know, if they were going to buy a car, they wanted a car which made a very strong statement about cleanliness and health and less pollution. And so the I Pace did very well against a very harsh, threatening um, external environment. So I hope electric cars are adopted very, very quickly. They're obviously victims of infrastructure as well, which is down to gov local governments as well. Um, but I, I think they are a good solution. I think they uh, provide a very good driving experience. We've made no secret that the, uh, the next XJ will only be available as an electric car. And when you talk about electric luxury cars, electric cars bring you great refinement, a lot of very, very um, instant power, which is totally silent. They're very, very clean. They have no pollution. They emit no CO2. Uh, so they're very good for urban environments. A lot of these limousines are used purely in an urban environment, as you know. And so as a type of vehicle, luxury sedans, you know, are very well suited for electric cars. And Jaguars, where you want this, like, um, velvety smooth, but huge amount of power, and absolute and serenity and tranquility and how it goes forward, you know, that they really, really do suit electric very well indeed. So we think there's a big future for that. I think we need to see more work on um, electric sports cars. I think, um, you know, the fact that to get more power, you need more weight. And weight is the, uh, you know, the uh, opposite of agility often. So we, we have a bit more work to think about what electric um Sports, sports cars might mean if we're talking about ultimate performance that's, that's something we're very interested in and we've got lots of good ideas about that going forward uh yeah i'm actually really excited by what you just said and uh, and to be fair i think everybody kind of expects that you know the fact that you have made some bold statements uh not just in terms of what you've said as a company but also with the products like the ipace and then the declaration on the xj uh, before we start talking about that though the xj itself uh, you know, many people have been waiting for a long time to see more about it. And I understand you not, you know, you can't share specific details. But uh, if you look at that project from the time it first started, you know, it's coming off of uh, a, a previous generation car that's already been successful, was also, you know, considered extremely good looking. Um, what was the sort of direction that you wanted to take this car into? The nameplate? Um. I can't talk too much about it, but yes. I will say that XJ, you know, in its original form, we're going right back to 68, 1968, took a different path to other, what we call, we know as F segment type cars. F segment is 7 Series, S Class, you know, Audi A. It took a different path to luxury cars at the time, something which was much more personal, 
so much, so much more about driving experience, um, and just and more of a uh, more of a tasteful intellectual spin on luxury. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's what Jagger is about, you know. It's, a, it's more of a personal connection to that car, something which you really, you know, the person who owns the car really connects with. Mm -hmm. You can sit in the back of a new Jaguar XJ and enjoy it thoroughly, but equally you'll enjoy it probably more if you drive the thing as well, and that's what makes Jaggers unique and so special. I think, you know, we're not about trying to do a big show-off in-your-face car. We are about something which is slightly understated, which um, really respects the, the choice of the driver and his tastes and his knowledge as well. Mm. And so the Jaguar always tries to connect in a more emotional level in, in that respect. Um, so it does try to rewrite the rule book, and I, I feel very successfully in it. It's, it's not your typical, you know, three box luxury sedan. That's not what we want to do. You know, we. I don't think that type of car is is, is right for the future, and certainly not right for Jaguar. The conversation about uh, the Lotus Elise was something I was going to have with you anyway. Uh, you mentioned your yeah. your years at uh, at Lotus. Um, you know, not everybody gets to work with a brand like that, which is not just niche but also almost hallowed in some ways. And and uh, yeah. people, you know, you don't always get to see one on the road. M many people haven't seen a Lotus ever on the road. For example, yeah. certainly not in these parts. Um, what was that like? I mean, to be able to you know put your uh, name to a car like the Elise. I think I think you know the um, I, when you design a car, you know you get you get the best possible results mm -hmm. if you're designing a car for yourself. <laughs> you really at the point in time when you design the car and you really believe that's the car you want and you know best. And then if you're fortunate enough to find some like-minded people, and it was my best friend, Richard Rackham, who did the chassis, and you do that together, and then someone just gives you the ability, the tools, the money, you know, the brand, you know, it doesn't get any better than that, you know. So come together with friends and design a car for you guys, you know, <laughs> is the ultimate. Yeah. And um, I couldn't do an at least now because, you know, my back is too stiff. I'm not as flexible <laughs> as I used to. You know, I'd find it too harsh. I'd find it too compromised. You know, and I, I drove my lease uh, day before yesterday, and you know, I still like it. But it's it's a. I look at it. It's it's a little bit ridiculous now when I look at it. <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, I couldn't design a car like that now. But at the time, that's that was what I really truly believed in, and luckily we found several thousand people who shared that view as well. And also, I think we had a point in time where that company was in a before the lease in a bit of a poor position. People had lost belief in it, uh, didn't really know where to take it. And so, you, again, you just got the people who really, really wanted to do that car come together. You know, the people who would, uh, you know, when other people had given up on it, you got the people who really thought there was something there. So, a small team of people with a real passion designing something for themselves. You know, and given the the key to the treasure box of Lotus, you know, given mm -hmm. the responsibility to do that, it's, it's fantastic. And we've had the same opportunity with, with Jaguar as well, myself and Ian Callum. You know, we've we've gone in there and they said to a couple of car car geeks like myself and Ian, saying, "Come on, here it is. It's yours now. Sort it out." You know, and that's 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 the ultimate dream for any any car designer. The uh, uh, current portfolio. Uh, it's an unfair question because it's like asking to choose between your children. But, uh, you know, a car that stands out for you, on, on what's your favorite design in the current model lineup? It, it will always be the sports car. I mean, the sports car <laughs> should always be the one that draws you to it. Because you know, the sports car is, does represent the best of the brand. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's the ultimate opportunity for the aesthetic and the proportion and the beauty to come alive. So it's, it's always going to be the sports car. So probably uh, it's got to be the F-Type uh, Coupe. Are you happy with the way the uh, facelift has been received? I mean, there's been a lot of positive talk about how the car looks now and almost looks like an all new model uh, and yet retains yeah. its character. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, no it, it, it looks very good. I think when you see them on the street driving around, they look a lot lower and squatter yeah. and, a, and more, you know, a nice proportion. More menacing. Just by some <laughs> fairly uh, simple changes. 
Uh, yeah, it, it's true. I, I mean, I remember the first time I saw it, I was a bit surprised because you don't expect that level of change. And yet when you looked at it, you you didn't know that there was that many things that were changed. So yeah. uh, it does, yeah, it does no, come no, across well. Yeah, no, no, it's been, it's been very successful for us. I'm extremely, extremely optimistic about everything that will come from you and your team. We, we can't wait uh, for you to continue to sort of delight us and excite us. It's, uh, you. it's always a pleasure and uh, it's wonderful speaking with you today. Yeah, and you. And all the best to you and all your readers and uh, I wish you all well and a healthy, good time and uh, hope you all have a great time, even during this terrible time and look after yourselves and your families. Thanks very much. Hope we can meet sometime soon and maybe this year if I can at least hope for it, um, you know, in yeah. case things open up again. But uh, please stay safe. Uh, best wishes yeah. to you and the family. Yeah, thank you very much. Great talking to you. Likewise. Thanks so much, Julian. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Julian Thompson is the uh, design director at Jaguar Cars and we have had the most fascinating conversation not just about the cars themselves but also what they represent. We've spoken also about the importance of how design is not just about how things look but about how that actually fits in to the entire product and uh, you know the very ethos of what that product is supposed to represent eventually not to the company not to us here who'd like to assess these things but of course to the owners the buyers who experience these cars who live with them. Uh, Jaguar in many ways has always exemplified that and uh, we're very excited to hear that there are so many things that you can now look forward to when uh, we talk about future Jaguars. They're not just going to be innovative, they're not just going to be possibly electric, but they're also definitely going to be extremely good looking. That's a guarantee we got uh, from Julian. Thank you all so much for watching. It's uh, always a pleasure to have you and uh, please keep your feedback coming and we will continue to of course bring you more exciting conversations right here.